So hi everyone, uh, welcome, welcome to my webinar. Uh, my name is Elena Semenek and this is Psychology of Happiness, where happiness is the purpose of life. And today we're going to talk about manipulations. We're going to discuss manipulators secrets and um, today webinar is extremely important for anybody who wants to learn how to spot a manipulation how not to fall for manipulators trap and how to answer to a manipulation this is a valuable knowledge that you won't find anywhere else i can give you like 100 percent guarantee because when i was uh, working on this presentation I um, I was going over several different books and lectures and I basically combined this presentation from small pieces. So enjoy, uh, let me know if you have any questions during the presentation, just write them in chat. And uh, today we're going to discuss all the theory. At the end of this webinar, I'm going to invite you to take the next step to join me for a four week online workshop, which is called My Life, My Rules. And today I will tell you all the theory about the manipulations. And if you would like to go and take the next step, uh, you will, you can do it and you can go and do actually practical exercises to uh, practice your knowledge, to challenge yourself so you can be the boss of your own life and you can live your life by your own rules. So please uh, let me know where you are from. Say hi in chat. Don't be shy. I am from Russia originally. Uh, I came to the United States uh, about 13 years ago. Uh, currently, I live in, in Los Angeles, California. So, please let me know where you are from and why are you here? If you're here, then you're supposed to be here. So, something uh, brought you here. Everything happens for a reason. So, please uh, share why are you interested in this specific topic. Based on your comments, I can... <clears throat> modify my presentation and make it even more effective, more uh, useful for you. So um, before we're going to start, if you came to this webinar uh, by clicking the link on social media, maybe your friend told you about this webinar. So if you did not receive uh, my invitation uh, by email, then please right now check the link below this video and uh, this link called um, sign up for free online webinars and click this link enter few fill out a short form uh, your name your city and your email and click subscribe so you won't miss anything uh, in the future because usually i um organize um, one two sometimes three free webinars per month and it's absolutely free uh, this is for you to work on your self-awareness to work on your self-knowledge self-development personal growth so please subscribe on my website and you will receive all my future webinars I'm uh, Elena Semenek. My name is E-L-E-N-A, Elena, and I'm a psychologist and a life coach. I am the founder of Psychology of Happiness, where happiness is the purpose of life. I believe that everybody deserves happiness and we are here on this planet Earth because we want to be happy. And for one person, it might be a meaningful relationship. For another person, it might be uh, career and success and social status uh, uh, at his uh, job or in his business for another person it might be health and um, no matter what happiness means to you I'm here to share my knowledge uh, with you and I do uh, free webinars on um, self-esteem uh, we last time we spoke about uh, psychological maturity emotional maturity in relationship the webinar before was about um, uh, seven steps how to become successful in life so all kind of topics if you did not see them please click the link below this video all uh, the links are there and i graduated as a social and political psychology 
from the Ural State University in Russia in 2004 and I received my bachelor's degree in psychology. I specialize in childhood trauma and marriage counseling and all type of addiction, uh, including weight problems, uh, smoking, alcohol, uh, video games. And I also specialize in uh, romantic relationship and couple counseling. Um, so if you would like to find your soulmate and something is not working for you, please let me know and I will be happy to help you. Okay, so let's start the webinar. And I would like to start the webinar by saying that there are two groups of people. And the first group is manipulators and the second one are those who are getting manipulated. And those roles can be switched based on the environment, based on the situation, uh, at home, at work, at the friend's house, at the restaurants, etc. Those roles can be switched. Um, the roles can be switched based on the person with whom are you talking to. For example, uh, when uh, a mother is talking to a child, she might use manipulation uh, to, to make her child to do what she wants. She may say something like, if you're not gonna um, listen to me, you're not gonna watch TV. If you're not gonna do your homework, you're not gonna go to your cousin's house for a play day. So a mother can use those manipulations basically to make a child to do what she wants. Child, uh, um, a child can also manipulate his parents uh, by using uh, emotions. He can cry, he can scream, especially little kids. And um, those roles, uh, who is the parent, and who is the child, who is a manipulator and manipulate to your, <laughs> the person who gets manipulated can switch. And let me show you the picture that I uh, found online when I was preparing this presentation for you. So children often can take roles of parents and parents become kids. And uh, when kids grow up, parents often wants to give them that role. They want to be babies. They want their kids to take care of them. And I'm talking about uh, parents who are not old and disabled. I'm talking about normal people who are <coughs> in their 60s and 70s even 50s and they uh, often like to act as children they like to call their adult children uh, when they need help uh, for attention for support or just because they are bored so please let me know in chat if you can relate to this if you can remember situations when your parents uh, acted as little kids and uh, there are two different types of manipulations, subconscious and conscious manipulations. Um, in most cases, uh, our parents, our friends, our spouses, and our children are using uh, subconscious manipulation. They don't know that they do it. Um, the other type of manipulation uh, that are conscious for example when brands are trying to convince us to purchase their products right now is a holiday season and um, we can see how big brands manipulate us to purchase their product and this type uh, of manipulation is called marketing and um, this type of manipulation is uh, intentional and carefully planned uh, so today we're not going to talk about big brands. Today we're going to talk about subconscious or semi-conscious manipulations that we face every day at work, at home, uh, with our friends and family, with our co-workers, and even with people on the street. So the goal of today's webinar is to teach you how to recognize manipulations so you won't feel shame, guilt, or any other negative feelings when you say no to your mother, when you say no to your dad, when you say no to your sister, or to your best friend, or even to your child. So the goal of today's uh, workshop is for you to be aware 
of manipulations and to learn how you can reply to manipulations. And of course, you will also notice when um, you manipulate others because we all use manipulations and the 90% of situations we don't realize it. So we try to manipulate people to get what we want and they try to manipulate us to get what they want. And at the end, somebody wins. So if you don't want to fall victim to manipulation and <clears throat> want to understand the actions and other people's behavior and want to understand yourself better, then you came to the right place at the right time. And uh, I would like to start with the term uh, which is called assertive behavior. Assertive behavior is an honest and confident expression of your feelings, thoughts and desires to another person while showing respect for his feelings, thoughts, rights and desires. So assertive behavior is like an ideal way how people should communicate uh, to each other. But we do not live in an ideal, in a perfect world. We are not perfect and other people are not perfect. So we uh, don't... Um, basically we violate it's maybe not the right word but we uh, this assertive behavior is something that we know but we don't usually act assertive towards other people so let's discuss 10 ways so 10 manipulators secrets basically how people manipulate each other how they break down this assertiveness towards other people and the first manipulator secret is a manipulator will interrupt you when you are speaking, especially at the beginning of your conversation. When you share your opinion and when you speak about your desires, the best way to confuse you is to interrupt you because the manipulator wants you to forget what you were saying. He wants you to forget your opinion, your words, uh, uh, your desire, so uh, he can manipulate you and make you do what he wants. So think about it. Uh, do you have uh, such people in your life? Uh, maybe you can remember a situation, maybe a specific situation, when uh, somebody interrupted you. Uh, somebody did not let you finish what you were saying, uh, somebody who uh, tried to jump ahead of you. Perhaps it's, perhaps you can remember even a situation when you were trying to interrupt somebody. So if you remember that situation, try to connect to your feelings and remember why did you do that? Because this is very important. Uh, when people try to interrupt others, they usually do it because they completely disagree with your opinion. So they try to stop you at the beginning. And uh, if you want to improve your manipulation skills, <laughs> then lesson number one, you should interrupt people at the beginning of their conversation. And usually manipulators uh, do it in a nice way. Uh, you can hear words like this. Before you can start explaining your idea, let me just add something here. Or, sorry for interrupt, but let me just add some information. So, and when they start saying something, uh, they can switch subject and they start basically um, proving their idea, ignoring yours. So, if you don't want to fall into this manipulation, then you should allow people you should not allow people to interrupt you. And uh, you also can do it in a nice way. So if a manipulator stops you saying something like, uh, before you start, let me please add something here. You can say, I would really appreciate it if you could let me finish first and then you can share your opinion with us. So just by learning this simple phrase, uh, you can stop falling into this manipulation. I would really appreciate it if you could let me finish first 
and then you can share your opinion with us. You can modify this phrase, but the idea is to be respectful towards a manipulator and not to allow a manipulator to interrupt you. Okay, so uh, next, uh, next secret. A manipulator will try to impose his idea on you. A manipulator will use feelings of shame, guilt, or even feelings of love to impose his ideas on you. For example, a person might say, I really worry about you being stressed for the last few months at work. I don't think that you should take this new position. It, and it looks like this person really cares about you. But if a month later you realize that uh, this person, your co-worker, got your promotion instead of you, then you know that this was not care, that was uh, manipulation. So another example, uh, parents often use feelings of guilt to convince their children to study a specific major at the university. Uh, when you hear words like, what would your father say if he knew that you had decided not to follow this promising career path? So this is manipulation. Another example, a manipulator can use authority and scare tactics. For example, at work, a co-worker can say to you something like this. The last time that the person decided to discuss his idea with boss, he was fired. So I don't recommend you to talk to boss about any new ideas that you have. So this is how a person uses scare tactics and authority figures. So you don't have to talk to boss because he will fire you. So in reality, this coworker does not want you to be the smart one does not want you uh, does not want your boss to love you more uh, in reality he worries about his own position and um, he does not want uh, your boss to notice you so he wants basically to pull you down and so you're gonna be equal and later he will use maybe your ideas to sh to talk to boss and to promote himself um, another um, example of authority tactics, a mother can say to a child something like this, if you don't stop crying immediately, I'm going to tell your father about your bad behavior and he will punish you when he comes back home. So uh, a mother, this mother is trying to use authority figure and scary uh, the child. In reality this mother she just um, she feels hopeless she does not know how to communicate with the child the child is not listening and she um, basically she is lost and this type of manipulation not really a bad one because in this example a mother um, kind of shows uh, her child that father is a leader that uh, his father is a strong man and he has a power she said I will tell your father and he will come back and punish you so she basically shows the child that father is a god and strong and powerful uh, maybe it's not the best way to do it but in a way she still kind of shows superiority and respect towards her husband so if you don't want to fall into this second type of manipulation, you should pay attention when uh, people use feelings of guilt, shame, or even love to convince you to do something that you want, or when people use authority figures or scare tactics. Okay, uh, number three. Uh, a manipulator will make decisions for you. So usually people will say something like this, or I'm sorry, I thought uh, this was what you wanted. Or they can say uh, something like this, uh, I'm sure that you told me that this is exactly what you want. I'm sure you said it. So people can blame you <laughs> for their decisions. And instead of taking responsibility for their decisions, they will uh, take on on a victim's role 
and they will blame you for that. So they might say uh, something like this. You should say thank you and appreciate what I did for you. This is what you wanted. This is what you told me. So they will try to uh, blame you and kind of uh, ask for appreciation of what they are doing. Even though that you did not ask them to do it, this is the manipulator's tactics. So again, if you don't want to fall into this uh, manipulation, you should tell a person that you do not appreciate his actions. You do not appreciate his help because you did not ask for it. So do not fall into this shame and game, uh, shame and blame game, or do not fall into this I did it because I love you game. They, there are all manipulations. Uh, and the person might not even realize it. If the person realizes and does it on purpose, then you should uh, distance yourself from the, this person and never talk to this person again. So <coughs> I'm talking about situations when people don't realize that they are trying to manipulate you. And usually those people are your close friends or your family members. So you cannot just distance yourself and ignore those people for the rest of your life. If <coughs> this is somebody that you <coughs> don't really know, like a stranger, or if this is a person, your co-worker that you don't, interact even at work often so then yes you can distance yourself and don't talk to this person so let's discuss an example of what can you do when this person is your family member or your close friend or your child um, let me tell you example uh, with my mom the story uh, with my mom so my mom loves to help without being asked. My mom likes to do a lot of things um, out of uh, love, out of her big kind heart. And uh, then she becomes upset when people don't appreciate it. So she might do something nice for me, but if I don't appreciate it, she will get upset. And um, this is her way to show love. And she does not realize that she is trying to manipulate me out of her love. Uh, so why people do that? People do that because they want to get uh, attention. They want um, to be heroes. They want to um, receive um, appreciation of their work so basically they want to tell their friends about what they did and they want to brag so in order to receive attention in order to receive <coughs> affection uh, our spouses our children our parents our friends uh, they can do this type of uh, manipulation so People uh, use manipulation in order to feel good. Uh, usually manipulators don't get enough love and appreciation in their life. So uh, they have to do this because they don't know how else they can receive it. But uh, at the same time, it does not mean that you should struggle. Even if you know that they do it out of love because they want, not because they love you, they might love you, but they do it because they want to feel special. So they do it for themselves, not really for you. And uh, when you understand this and you realize that this person did not get enough uh, love and attention, it still does not mean that you should struggle. So uh, you, mm, you can reply something like this to this type of manipulation. You can say like, for example, mom, I really appreciate if appreciate it if you ask me first the next time. I really value and appreciate your desire to help. So you tell the person that you value the desire to help and uh, you appreciate it but please ask me first the next time would you please do this for me 
And when you tell a manipulator that you appreciate his desire to help, her desire to help, in most cases, this person will ask you next time because uh, this person will know that you will uh, give uh, him even more appreciation. And then he can actually you know, tell everybody proudly about what he or she did. So this way, a person will feel valued and appreciated. And uh, it's a big chance that he or she will ask you next time. Okay, the next, uh, the next manipulator's secrets. A manipulator will use or abuse friendships for his own benefits. A manipulator can use your friendship to get what he wants. For example, a manipulator can ask to borrow money from you. And of course, a true friends of yours uh, can also end up in a situation where they need money. But the way a friend, a true friend would ask it and a manipulator would ask it is different. A true friend would explain to you the reason why he needs money and he will uh, give you the exact day when he's planning to repay it. A manipulator will complain about the situation and devoke pity. He will not give you any specific day when he is planning, planning to repay you money. He will say something like this. Um, I will return it as soon as I can, as soon as possible. I will try to return it soon. Or uh, he might say, I will return it as soon as I sell my car, sell my phone, uh, as soon as I get my next salary. And uh, he might create thousands of uh, events when he is planning to uh, return you money, but he will not give you the, the exact date. So let me know in chat if you know uh, those people, if you... Uh, ever been in uh, this type of situation when you lend um, your friend money and you had to remind him about paying you back. So the manipulator will uh, base his uh, time when he's going to return the money on a specific event and this specific event might never occur and even if it occurs something else would happen somebody or something else will stop him from paying the money back so once again he will blame somebody else and he will try to make you feel pity for him so a manipulator <coughs> will use words like this I have known you forever. I know that I can trust you. Or I have known you forever. You know that you can trust me. Uh, I have known you since childhood. Therefore, I can ask you this favor. I know that you won't tell no to me. Or a, pe a person can say something like this. Uh, you are one of the people, of the few people that I can rely on. So a manipulator will uh, try to make you feel so special so you can say no. And going back to money example, a true friend would be okay if you give him a note saying that he, he had borrowed money from you. But if you ask a manipulator to do this, he will accuse you of not trusting friends. So he will put shame on you. He will put guilt on you for asking for something like this. So um, when you're talking to your friends, pay attention to how they ask for help. This is how to avoid this type of manipulation. Just be aware of what your friends are saying to you. Are they honest and straightforward with you? Or do they use nice words, uh, feelings of pity, or even make you feel bad when you say no? A good friend would uh, understand the word no. He will be okay with your no, and he will continue being your friend. A fake friend would create drama, use uh, feelings of guilt, uh, put shame on you. He would say like, how could you do this? I always thought that we are best friends, that we are good friends. So he will 
create uh, this dramatic scene in order to make you to do what he wants. Let's move on. The next step. Number five. A manipulator will create drama to attract people's attention. Uh, an experienced manipulator knows that emotions are his tools. So therefore, instead of using logic and explaining to people what he or she wants, a manipulator will use emotions. And this usually is a female tactics. So if you don't agree with her, she will get upset, she will get angry, and she might even call your names. She will try to blame you for her mood. So a manipulator might cry suddenly, but she will avoid eye contact because um, she knows uh, subconsciously, she knows subconsciously that uh, our body language never lies. And she might be a good actor, but people can still spot her manipulation. So she will hide her face to avoid eye contact. And this type of manipulation uh, is what I called semi-conscious. So usually those women, they know that they manipulated, but they are um, so used to this game. So it's like a part of their life. They know it and uh, that's why they hide their face, but they're playing this game for years. Usually kids uh, use this type of manipulation when they can scream, uh, cry, but you know that they're faking it. So this is kind of the same. <clears throat> so a person who uses emotions to manipulate others often does it semi-consciously. And... Um, Although for kids, it's kind of normal. This is the way how they learn different types of communications. And when your child is trying to manipulate you, you should stop this type of behavior. So your child will not grow up and manipulate other people. Because uh, if um, your daughter will do this, if your daughter will learn this game, it's going to be... Mm, it's not going to make her happy because she will have to live in a constant lie and she will not be able to create a uh, loving, caring, honest, close relationship with other people. So, but uh, still for kids, it's kind of normal. This is the way how they learn what is good and what is bad in life. But for adults, it's not really normal. So even if a person does not realize that uh, she uses uh, manipulation, it does not mean that you should allow her to do it. So if you won't uh, allow to do it with you, uh, at first, this person will try harder and uh, it's gonna be even more drama and she will put all her um, acting skills to show you that it's a real emotions and she really feels bad uh, in order for you to feel guilt. She will uh, increase her emotions. But if you won't allow her to do it and if you will not react into her manipulations, she will um, probably find another victim. She will distance yourself, uh, herself from you and uh, she might ignore your calls, texts, or even any conversations. And if this person is your close friend, or maybe uh, if she is your girlfriend, then you might think that you don't want to lose this person. You don't want to lose your relationship. And unfortunately, she is the one who is using and abusing your friendship. So she is the one who is not allowing your friendship to grow into meaningful relationship. So when you say no to such person, when you're not going to fall into this type of manipulation, you will give her and yourself an opportunity to create a healthy relationship where both of you are equal. So uh, often because we are afraid to lose our close friend, to lose the uh, relationship, romantic relationship, we are willing to basically to sacrifice ourselves. But the more we sacrifice, the more toxic those relationships becomes. Okay, uh, next step. 
Number six, a manipulator will blame you, point out your mistakes and ignore your feelings. And uh, this is very important. Uh, a lot of times we don't notice this type of manipulation. So all people make mistakes. And when we make mistakes, we feel bad. So when we feel bad, our emotions are already low. And for manipulator, it's very easy to come into the picture and make us do whatever they want. Here, you should understand that we all make mistakes and this is how we learn and this is how we grow. We grow from our own mistakes. So when your friend or your co-worker or your family member, your husband, your wife, hears about your mistake, uh, usually in a healthy relationship, uh, they will try to encourage you. They will try to support you. They will try to make you feel better. But this is not the case with a manipulator. Uh, the best way to control a person is to use emotions. We already discussed it. So uh, another best way to control uh, a person is to use superiority. And manipulator will try to put you down. Instead of supporting you, he will point out on your mistake and he will exaggerate it as well. Instead of uh, supporting you in this difficult situation, he will ignore your feelings and you will feel even worse. Uh, then the next, th this manipulation has two steps. The first step, he will make you feel worse then he will put himself above you and becomes a god or a higher power. And when he brings himself up, he will switch. Like immediately he will switch into a soft, kind, understanding mode. And he will do it quickly. So at, at this, like at the first moment, this person is kind of uh, pointing out your mistakes, he's blaming you, he can say, how could you do this? Oh my God, this is so stupid. Like, why did you even say this? Why did you do this? And then it's like, okay, 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 let's figure out what we can do in this situation. Let me help you. So a manipulator will switch quickly and becomes a loving, caring person. And he will offer you his support, his understanding, but there is always a but with a manipulator. Uh, but in order for him to give you his support, in order for him to help you, you should follow his rules. So he will say, okay, uh, let's come down. Let's figure, let me help you. Uh, uh, let me, like you already did a lot. So you definitely don't know what to do. So let me tell you what you should do. Let's think about it. And he will tell you exactly what he wants you to do. Uh, so this way, a manipulator creates a dependent relationship. And uh, a woman can become dependent on her husband's decision. A child, an adult child, can become dependent on his parents' opinion. And I have such friends, they're, they're not young kids anymore, but they depend on their parents' opinion, on their parents' approval. A grown-up person can become dependent on his friend's approval. A woman can always call her friend in order to get her approval before she does something. And a healthy relationship uh, are when people, both people, have an equal position, even if they have different opinion. Remember, we spoke about assertive behavior, ability to express your own feelings, opinions, desires uh, openly and honestly, while respecting opinion, desires, uh, rules, uh, ideas of other person. So this is healthy relationship. Healthy relationship is when two people are equal and even if they have different opinions. So both opinions are important. And if one person cannot make a decision without the approval of the other person, then I recommend you to look closer. It might be a dependent relationship. Uh, the longer you stay in those relationships, the harder it will be to recover, the more toxic they will become. So this relationship is uh, detrimental 
to your self-esteem and to your self-confidence. A manipulator will always enable his victim. He has power over you. And the more power he has over you, the easier it for him to use you. So if what I am saying is resonate with you, uh, please let me know in chat. You can ask your questions uh, in chat right now. You can ask them under the video if you're going to watch this webinar later. But if uh, what uh, I'm saying is resonates with you, and even if you need my help to understand your situation, even if you're not sure if your relationship uh, are dependent or toxic or not, because when you are in this manipulation game, it's very hard sometimes to realize that this is a dependent relationship. So I'm here to help you. Please uh, don't uh, hesitate to contact me. And all the links is below this video. If you need my help, let me know. Okay, let's uh, move on to the next point. The next uh, step, number seven, a manipulator will avoid any inconvenience to oneself. So a manipulator will cause harm and or inconvenience to other people in order to avoid any inconvenience to oneself. And uh, we can't always get what we want in life. Yeah, and you probably know this song. You can't always get what you want, right? So sometimes you have to wait. Sometimes we have to compromise. And uh, uh, often we have to leave our comfort zone to achieve our goals. But this is not the case for manipulators. This is not true for manipulators. A manipulator will do everything to avoid any inconvenience or discomfort to himself. So uh, if, if a manipulator decides to tolerate discomfort, he will do it only because later he will be able to use it for his new manipulation. So a manipulator likes phrases like this just because i love you i made this dinner for you uh just because i love you uh my sweetheart i am taking the garbage out uh i was shopping for three hours in order to buy you this wonderful sweater so a manipulator will ignore uh, the fact that cooking dinner taking uh the garbage out uh buying clothes for children uh, those are all part of the household chores uh, and like buying uh, f clothes for kids, uh, making dinner, taking them uh, to school, driving them to school. Those are parts of parents' responsibility. And the, all people who live in a house should share those responsibilities. And yes, we do things out of love, but also we do those things because it's our responsibilities and we also benefit from them. Uh, I would like to share with you a true story. A mother was telling her seven years old daughter that she was shopping all day and bought her some clothes just because she loves her. And her excuses uh, for not spending time with her daughter sounded like this. How are you, baby? I love you so much. Look what I bought for you. I'm so tired. I was shopping all day for you. And the daughter was waiting for her mother all day. And even when her mother got home, she could not spend time with her because she started. She was tired from shopping. And as a result, um, the daughter cannot be angry at her mother. And she cannot ask her to play with her. Conversely, uh, she is supposed to be understanding and grateful because her mother spent the whole day shopping just to buy her new sweater. So manipulators will cause harm to others. They will ignore uh, other people's feeling and they will express this in a way that you should be grateful grateful for their behavior so they do something for themselves they don't care about you and then you cannot even say anything because 
you feel bad and now you should be grateful for what they did uh, let me know also in chat uh, uh, if you can relate to this if uh, maybe you experienced this type of manipulation with your mother or with your father or maybe <coughs> maybe uh, with your co-worker this type of manipulations are often um, often can be at work people can say like oh my god like i did this for you i help you and now you are not grateful but people did it because they wanted to do it and not you so let me know if you understand or if you can relate to this type of manipulation when a manipulator will try to avoid any inconvenience and blame you uh, not blame you and will um, use you and ask you to be grateful for them using you basically okay step number eight a manipulator will avoid making any decisions oh, let me switch the slide i did not switch the slide right okay so uh number eight a manipulator will avoid making any decisions in order not to be responsible for them he will make you to make decisions and be responsible for it but the decision will be not yours the decision will be his so if a manipulator has to make a decision he will uh, get away from the essence he will distort facts or prevent the truth a manipulator will always seek for a speedy approval of his decisions a manipulator knows that if he gives you time to think about uh, about the decision you will likely notice his manipulation so he will try to confuse you and uh, push you to agree with him right away and this is mostly how advertising work so every advertisement has this type of manipulation and it's called call to action you've heard phrases like act now call now call immediately do not miss this limited time only three days only come to the store before uh, 1 p.m uh, to get this wonderful discount etc so uh, brands are using this type of manipulation so they are making you to do what they want <laughs> but decision is yours kind of right so our emotions do not last longer than 30 minutes and if you don't make a decision within those 30 minutes uh, it is more likely that you will walk out of the store and uh, let's discuss how it works in the relationship because in the store like with the brand with the advertisement it's kind of clear but in a relationship it's it's a bit different so your mother your spouse or your child uh, will use this manipulation uh, to make uh, you decide for them and to do what they want uh, they will not make decisions on their own because they want to avoid responsibility but if your decision proves successful then they will remind you that it was their decision and not yours so do you know those people people who like to blame you for your failures but but take uh, all the credits for themselves when you are successful uh, an example um, of this manipulation a manipulative mother will blame uh, her child for bad grades in school so if child has bad grades it's his responsibility it's his fault and the mother will blame a child for being stupid for being for not paying attention uh, for not doing homework and blah 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 but if this child receives good grades or some type of reward in school she will tell everybody about it she will come to school she will talk to a teacher she will make sure that everybody knows that this is her child and moreover it will not be about the child it will be all about her being a great mother so if the child has bad grades it's his fault if he has good grades it's 
her uh, success, it's her achievement. So let me know in chat if you know such people. Say hi, don't be shy. Let's, let's make it move as a dialogue versus lecture. Step number nine, a manipulator will position himself as being more powerful and capable than you. And this is a, a picture from the movie um, Devil Wears Prada. Uh, so a manipulator will always position himself as being more powerful. And you might heard uh, phrases like this, because I know better than you, because I just know it, you should do it. Why? Because I just said so, because I just know it, or because I've been in a situation like this. And the manipulator will not give you chance to think or to argue. Uh, a manipulator can say something like this, because I'm your mother, therefore I know better. Because I'm your father, therefore you will do what I say. Because I'm your best friend, I have known you for years, therefore I'm telling you, you should do this. Stop asking why, just do it. I'm your best friend. This I know exactly what you need. I have known you since childhood. Because I'm your husband, you should listen to me. So please write in comments or uh, below in comment section when you're gonna watch this video later. What other phrases come to your mind? What else people can say when they try to position themselves to be more powerful than you? Okay, number 10, a manipulator will have thousands of excuses, always, 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 always. Uh, you probably have met a person who always has an excuse. No matter the situation, no matter what you say to him, he will always have an excuse. Uh, it's like there is not even a point to starting a conversation with this person because he's always right. He always has something to say. Uh, he always has somebody to blame, <laughs> other person, the situation, but he always has to prove that he is right. So do you know those people? And what to do? What to do if you have this skilled manipulator who always has an excuse? And my advice to you is to do nothing absolutely nothing simply ignore this type of behavior because if you say something he will come out come up with an excuse you say something else he will come up with another excuse so do nothing say nothing ignore just ignore this type of behavior and when a manipulator finally realizes that his manipulation does not work with you he will find another victim and he will stop playing this game with you. Probably he will distance himself from you, which is good in this case. And here in uh, such in this situation, it's important to remember that you should do what you think is right for you, what you think is good for you, and do not get involved in the conversation. And if you do get involved then simply change the topic and in here i would like to give you three phrases that uh, if you can memorize and practice uh, those phrases will help you not to fall into this type of manipulation phrase number one by the way i also wanted to talk about so when a manipulator is uh, giving you his excuse just interrupt him right away also you know use the manipulation number one right interrupt the manipulator in order to break his manipulation so say by the way i also wanted to discuss phrase number two did i mention that and you can talk about anything else just switch the topic did i mention that uh did i mention that uh uh, my friend is coming next week. Oh, did I mention that this, this and this happens? So just switch to another topic. Phrase number three, I have already made my decision. So let's talk about 
birthday next week. I have already made my decision. So let's talk about what we're going to have for dinner tonight. I have already made my decision. So let's talk about um, your last vacation. How was it? And you can switch the topic. So please write number five in chat. Uh, if you believe that you can use this advice in your daily life. Uh, if you can memorize those three phrases, uh, then you can basically avoid any type of manipulation. And let me know below the video if you have any questions about any of those 10 ways of how people can use manipulation in everyday situation. Let me know what was the most important thing for you uh, in today's webinar. And today, as I said at the beginning, we uh, discuss the theory. I gave you a few techniques. I gave you uh, several phrases how to uh, talk to a manipulator. And I recommend uh, to watch this video again uh, if you, in case if you miss some phrases or if you did not write them down, watch it again and send it to people that uh, might be interested in this topic. Share it with your friends, with your, fr uh, with your loved ones, and please click like. If you find this video helpful, please click like and subscribe to my channel. And now I would like to invite you to the next step. This is the theory, but if you don't practice it, you will soon forget it. So the next step is to master this theory, is to know how you can build and create your own life and how you can live by your own rules. So I would like to invite you to my four week uh, online workshop, which is called My Life, My Rules. And um, let me show you my website. So on my website, uh, which is elenasemenek.com, and um, you under the video, let me show you. So under the video, you can scroll down and click show more button. Then you will see the link for the My Life, My Rules workshop and you will see sign up for free self-improvement webinar link. So when you click on this link, uh, on the home page, you will see a simple form, enter your email name, city and country sign up. This way you will be invited to all my free webinars. Nothing to lose, a lot to gain, please do it right now. And if you click on this banner on the right side, or if you put your mouse over the workshop, the first workshop, which is called My Life, My Rules, this is the workshop where I would like to invite you. And um, this workshop will start on December 7th. And if you cannot join us online, then you can watch uh, a recorded version later. So all sessions will be recorded. So I encourage you to come for this webinar. I encourage you to go to the website and read the information here. And I even have a section uh, where I share with you some exercises and maybe some of them will resonate with you. Also, if you invite your friend, you will get additional 25% off both you and your friend. So when you go on my website, just scroll down and uh, at the bottom you will find the form where you can fill out your information and that will reply to you within 24 hours. So if it's a holiday, then it might take a little bit longer, but usually I reply within two, three hours. So uh, let me know if you have any questions about uh, any of 10 ways how people can manipulate us. If you have any questions about um, about online workshop and uh, I'm here to answer your questions and we're gonna finish this uh, live broadcast if you don't have any. Uh, I can see uh, Mona Life, Miranda, Mark Wood. Wow, that's such a uh, a long name and it's uh, like three words that start with an M. One, Mona Life, Miranda, Mark Woods. Hi, hi. Um, so uh, if you have any questions, you can always write me on Facebook directly on Instagram or uh, you can uh, fill out uh, the form on my website. 
So if you find this video helpful, please click like, subscribe and share my video. Share it on your social media, on your Facebook, Twitter, LinkedIn. Send it to your friends by email. And thank you for coming. Uh, I am uh, looking forward to seeing you at my uh, Life My Rules workshop. And again, all the links are below this video. Thank you for watching and my name is Elena Semenek and this is Psychology of Happiness, where happiness is the purpose of life. Okay, see you soon. Bye.